Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kelly again. Today talking about a hierarchy of quadrilaterals. So you hopefully recall from our lesson on a hierarchy of triangles that you should have watched before this one, that a hierarchy is just a way to classify shapes. So knowing that the topmost or <clears throat> excuse me, outmost ring would be the most general category and then going down or moving within, you're getting into subcategories. So we already have done that with triangles. Now we're going to look at doing it with quadrilaterals. So the first thing I want you to do is looking at these pictures here on the left, which you see have letters in them. I want you to see if you can figure out which ones of these you would place on these lines if you had this to do. So in your notebook, maybe write down the word a trapezoid and then beside it, put which letter you think fits that description. Make sure you've read each one of these and give this a go. So I'm going to just read through them real quick with you. And you're going to try and in your notes, put down maybe just part of it. It's up to you. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. So which of these do you think would be true for that? You can pause me as often as you might, as you like and need. I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. So pause if you need a minute to check that out. A kite is a quadrilateral with two separate pairs of adjacent, which means side by side, adjacent equal length sides. So what do you think would be a kite? A parallelogram is a trapezoid with two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides. So a parallelogram has two pair of parallel sides. A rhombus is a parallelogram with all four sides equal in length. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. And a square is a rectangle with all four sides equal in length. Okay, give this a go. Pause me. When you're ready, come on back and we'll look at the answers together. All right, so here are some sample answers to what might fit in these categories. If you have different ones, you may not be wrong. Several different letters would have fit for each of these, but let's just quick talk these through. So I said for a trapezoid, it's a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. I picked D. That's a pretty classic standard looking trapezoid, but we're going to talk more about that, so don't worry. For K, I mean for a kite, I picked K. You may have picked B, which is another very traditional looking kite. I picked K and it has two pair of adjacent ones that are side by side, equal length sides. And I can tell that because these have the one tick, meaning they're the same. And these have the two tick marks, meaning they're the same. So that fits that description. A parallelogram, I picked G, pretty standard parallelogram, two pair of parallel sides, again, using the tick marks to help me. The rhombus, I picked A, very traditional rhombus shape. All four sides have the same one tick mark. A rectangle, C, it has the right angles. And L, I picked for the square. And you can tell by the tick marks that are all twos that they're four equal in length. Okay, so if you got those, or if you at least agree with the ones that I chose, maybe yours are different, that's all right. Would you also be able to answer for me this? Is quadrilateral P a trapezoid? A trapezoid, a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. I hope you would say yes, it is. Even though it's not that traditional looking trapezoid that we think of, this actually meets the qualifications of a trapezoid. It has at least one pair of parallel sides. In fact, it has two, but that means it's also a trapezoid, right? And how about quadrilateral L? Is this a kite? So I would agree it doesn't look like our traditional kites, but a kite says a quadrilateral with two separate pairs of adjacent equal length sides. So are these adjacent? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, am I on L? Here we are. Are these adjacent? Yes. Are they the same uh, length? Yes. Are these? Yes. So even though it has all four, it would still qualify as a kite. So if every time we're wondering if a shape is a particular one, would we have to look up the definitions each time? That doesn't sound very efficient. So instead, I think we could see how a hierarchy of quadrilaterals might help us. So let's take a look at this. 
So here's a hierarchy and it says test property here. It just means which property are we going to um, delineate that we're going to be talking about. So for quadrilaterals, we know all quadrilaterals have to have four sides and four angles. I think you would see, I could put any of these here, right? These are all quadrilaterals. All right, so here's an example one, E. Yep, that would fit. So then notice how I'm gonna go down, right? But this one is called a branched hierarchy, different than what we did for the triangle, which only had one path to go. This one is a branched one, and I could go one of two ways. And for each of our different quadrilaterals, we're gonna try them both ways. And we'll, we will find out eventually that they can probably, some of them, go both ways, and that's okay. These aren't exclusive of each other. That's what that means, right? So let's take a look at um, the next way. So we could go to kites. And remember that kites have two separate pair of adjacent equal length sides. That's one way we could go as a subcategory of quadrilaterals. Or we could go trapezoids. And remember the trapezoids have at least one pair of parallel sides. So that's what we're putting out here as the property that we're talking about trapezoids, at least one pair of parallel sides, and kites, two pair of equal length adjacent sides. All right, so I hope you're writing this in your notes. It's gonna come in really handy for you to make sure that you know this. So getting this copy down will be helpful for you. Feel free whenever you need to, to pause me to get that done for yourself. But let's keep, let's keep talking. So if something's a quadrilateral and it's also a kite, where else could it go? So let's follow down. It might also be a rhombus. A rhombus means it would have four equal length sides. All right, so if it has four equal length sides and two pair of equal length adjacent sides, and it has four sides and four angles, it would fit here. Could we go further? Sure. It could also be that it could have four right angles and four equal length sides. So you notice the traditional square fits here, right? And the traditional one, whoops. All right, so, hmm. <laughs> so you can see how I could follow down on this side. Let's see if we can do it on the other side as well. So four sides and four angles. We have our trapezoids as our other option. Those have at least one pair of parallel sides. That at least is pretty key. What else could we do with those? Well, how about, could we check to see if they have two pairs of parallel sides? So would every trapezoid have two pair of parallel sides? I hope you would say no. Some shapes are going to go right here. Some shapes are going to just stay right here. But some of them are going to come to here, but they wouldn't be able to go into yet another subgroup because they don't have two pair of parallel sides, which is what it takes to be a parallelogram. So notice here's another branch for you. Parallelograms, which would be trapezoids and quadrilaterals, could also be rhombuses or rectangles. So parallelograms that have four right angles are going to come this way, and those that have four equal length sides, which aren't then right angles, would go this way. All right, coming back over. And then we can see here from our rectangles, could they also have four right angles and four equal length sides? If they do, they would come from here to here. If they don't, like the traditional rectangle that you might picture, it can't keep going because it doesn't have four equal length sides, right? So that's what stops it where it is. So I hope this makes sense to you. Again, get it written down for yourself. It's going to really come in handy as we move on to our next activity. So I want you to see if you can place these that have not been placed yet. So quadrilateral C, if I'm looking at that, I'm starting at the top and I'm saying, okay, so does it fit as a quadrilateral? Well, yes, it has four sides and four angles. If I come down the kite side, does it have two pairs of equal length adjacent sides? Two pair of adjacent equal length, oh, it doesn't. So it's not gonna go over here, right? How about over here? Does it have at least one pair of parallel sides? Uh, yeah, it has two actually, so that's at least one dropping down. Does it have two pair of parallel sides? Yep, so right now I'm saying C is here. Can it go further? Does it have four equal length sides? Well, no, it certainly doesn't. 
can it come here? Does it have four right angles? Take a look. You can see that they're delineated there. It definitely does. Can it keep going down to the four right angles and four equal length sides? It cannot. So you could see that I could put C right here. You're going to do that with the rest of these letters. And then when you're done with that, so pause the video. When you're done with that, come back and check out to see how you did. And here are the answers to where they would be able to go on the lowest point of the hierarchy. See if you agree with those. If not, make sure when you're talking to your teacher next, you talk about how you got some of those to go to different um, levels of the hierarchy. Here's what I think. All right. Thanks for listening.